Welcome to engaging your audience. Before you leave today, before you walk out that door, I'm going to give you ESP. Connection with your audience. We're going to have the three tools that will help you engage your audience. E, eye contact. S, story. And P, participation. Eye contact. That's our first E. Have you ever tried to have a conversation with a teenager who's doing this? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I hear ya. Hmm? How does that feel? Do you feel like you're getting through? Do you feel any kind of connection? Ignored. What I'd like to do is a, an activity in groups of three, two and three. So if you can get into groups of two and three, would like you to, to take turns being the person who introduces yourself to the other people. But, but you cannot make eye contact with them. It's just like introductions at Toastmasters, but you can't make eye contact with either of the other people in your group. And when you had done that for uh, five to 10 seconds, you can go ahead and switch so that each of the people in the group gets a chance to be the introducer of themselves and to be the recipient of that. Go ahead and start. Make sure everybody gets a chance to be the, the speaker. Okay. So how did that feel? Did you have any connection with that person? Alienated. Feel like you're talking to the wall or someone else. One of the most important things about eye contact is we, li much, much, we live in eastern Washington and we're familiar with irrigation. And one of the most powerful metaphors I found is eye contact is like irrigation water. And to water the entire yard or the entire orchard or the entire vineyard without skipping spots and without drowning. The other opposite extreme of no eye contact is focusing on one person in your audience and going back to them almost exclusively. I'd like to have you get in your groups again and this time the speaker has to make unre unrelenting eye contact with the, one of the people. So go ahead and talk about what you did this morning or what you had for breakfast but basically back in your groups but this time you are basically glued to somebody in your group. <clears throat> Just one person. Just one person. Mm -hmm. And then switch off. Yep, you can talk about anything, but you're glued to that person. You can't look anywhere else. Okay, if you've got more than two people in your group, go ahead and switch over to another person in your group. <clears throat> okay. 
So Sheila, has everyone in your group had a chance to do that? Okay, great. Okay, if everybody is done, just a, another few seconds to wrap up. Okay. Sorry. No, that's okay. This is again an example of a breakout group that I'm doing. If you wanted to do a third activity that was following this, what would be the natural progression of that activity? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh. I'm asking for feedback here. Oh. So what would be the third thing? We've done two extremes. Go ahead. Now bring it together and look at everybody. Right. So we're going to play the sprinkler. We're going to play the sprinkler. <clears throat> sprinkler. So back to the metaphor of sprinkling. Okay. We've done two extremes where there was a drought and, where the, and we were drowning one person with our attention, with our eye contact. So this time, would like you to think of your favorite sprinkler. I like the ones that go or Maybe you like the ones that go arching over. But what I want you to do is look at where you're sitting in our, in our room and find a way to be that sprinkler so that you spread your attention across the room in a consistent pattern so you're not drowning any part of the room or any person, but you're not um, leaving any short of water. Okay. So I would like you to, to go ahead and for the next minute, go ahead and do an eye sweep of the room where you feel comfortable. Okay. An eye sweep like a sprinkler. It's going to be almost impossible because a good breakout session you're moving. I know. Good, people are really interacting. This is the whole Okay. <laughs> Would like to have one person from each group talk about what they talked about as far as the sprinklers and some ideas to share with the rest of the group on what would help you even out your eye contact with a room. So I'm going to start over here. You don't want to make, make it look mechanical, yeah. right. like you're going too fast. Yeah. Okay. What about the group in the back? Thank you. 
How about over here, this group? Well, actually, I just talked about breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> it was great. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to her place. I won't make it to the meeting, but I'll have a good time. I missed my turn the last time, so I. She got an extra lex in now. That's great. No, no, that's what we're we're doing the participation so that people can get uh, the opportunity to hear different groups of people hear what we are getting from the exercise as well. One of the most important things too is when you pick different people, that means that you're not going to the same person each time. That's hard if you're scared, especially if you have a few of the people in the audience that are really focused in on you and they're, they're giving you good energy, you're going to be drawn to them and sometimes it's easy to draw, go back to that person and ignore the people around them. I also do music on Sundays and one of the things I learned the hard way is my congregation doesn't want me to make direct eye contact with them, they get uncomfortable. So how do I give them the sense that I am looking at them without looking at them? And one trick that another Toastmaster taught me is to look at their forehead so that you're not looking directly into their eyes, but you're making eye contact. So I'm going to be looking at each of you at your forehead, but you still think I'm looking at you, but I'm not staring in your eyes, and you're not as uncomfortable. So that's one thing that you might want to use as a strategy if your audience isn't comfortable with direct eye contact, or you're not comfortable with direct eye contact yet. Because if you're looking here, you're still giving them the sense of connection. It's just not as powerful and potent, but that may be where their comfort zone is. So E, the key, the key initial ingredient is eye contact. <clears throat> Before we leave eye contact, how many of you folks have been to see your doctor or a doctor in the last year or two? Have you, have you noticed a difference in the amount or the quantity or the quality of eye contact? Huge problem, huge issue, and a lot of people feel like their doctors don't listen to them anymore because they're sucked in by the screen. So it's real important that we do pay attention with our eyes. Maureen Mould gives us a great metaphor on listening with your eyes. In her talk, she talks about listening with your eyes, and I love that metaphor, and especially on one-on-ones or small groups, that is a real focus area for me, that I can really get people to relax and open up if I'm listening to what they're saying with my eyes. They, they really blossom under that amount, uh, type of attention. The second part of ESP today is story. Facts versus story. What I'd like to do is have you now think about you, one of your favorite characters, fictional or otherwise, but a favorite character that you relate to in movies or books. Okay. I'd like to sh have you share that with your group. Uh, somebody, a character that you personally identify with. Whether it's a Star Wars character, whether it's a other type of movie or book, let's go ahead and share that. A character. Your favorite character.
dinner, the in-laws and the relatives, it all comes together like a nice and quiet because of They nailed it, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> That's interesting because that would be, <laughs> yeah, right. That's funny though. That is so interesting. Yeah. <coughs> Maybe a couple. Another one more minute. <coughs> so go ahead, keep going. If it's working. So, you, so um, actually, the four groups take a little bit longer than the three groups. So I'll be wanting to figure out yeah. how to time it based on how many people are average number of people in a group. Are you doing this at the conference? Yes, this is a breakout session um, mm -hmm. prelude you know, practice. I, in my career, I went to all these extension meetings, and they always had breakouts. Mm -hmm. Always. And then, you know, discuss something, and one person reported back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it's all about connecting with your audience. I wish I had this before, because I was always bashful. I love that. I'm going to use that. Yes. Probably. Are we already at 18? Wow. Okay. That's good in the sense because I was thinking I wasn't going to have enough time. I mean, I was going to have too much time compared to what I had, but this is actually really good. Okay. All right. A character that you identify. What is it about this character that attracted you? For most of us, it's we respond or we relate to that character, correct? Jim and Krista were saying that <clears throat> if you ask somebody which of the seven dwarfs, which are the names of the seven dwarfs, they will usually start out with the name of the dwarf that they personally most identify with. <laughs> I think that's really interesting, very interesting. Story is so important because facts do not connect. We connect with stories and people and characters, and that's what a story has. For example, the Titanic. We all know what happened to that Titanic. In three, in three sentences, they built a big ship. The ship sailed. Hit a hit an iceberg, and despite everyone's expectations, it sank. But there is one of the biggest movies of all time, based on that three sentences. What does this movie have that those facts don't have? The story, the characters, the interaction between the characters, something that we relate to. And that's what you need to relate to your audience, is you need to find a story to help them experience and relate to the points that you want to make. Okay? The last P is participation. And what have we been doing all afternoon? Participation, per participating. If I was in the breakout session right now and I had more time, which Sheila has given me the red card, I would take the time to, to have everybody share what they're going to take back with them from our breakout. That sprinklers. sprinklers, there you go. I'm going to take back the seven dwarfs analogy. I'm going to ask my husband, which, 
which, which are the names of the seven dwarfs? <laughs> I'm going to use it as a litmus test. But if I had that extra time, which I will have 40 minutes in my breakout session, I'll take the time to go around and do that. But I want to thank you for your participation today and hope that when you walk out that, this door, you'll have ESP, eye contact, story, and participation to help you connect with your next audience.